come back for another session of Wednesday in the Word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most holy God, our Father, we come at this time thanking you, O Lord God, for another blessed opportunity to come together and study your Word. Pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you be the teacher today. Let me be your vessel. Lord, give us what you will have us to learn from your word on today. And bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. God bless. I'm so glad to see uh, all of you who are here this morning uh, in the classroom. And those of you who are uh, watching uh, in the virtual classroom, we're just grateful for everyone this morning. All right. Are you, are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. He has allowed us to come together one more time. We, we used to sing that song, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a great lesson before us today. All of them are good, but sometimes it just gets better and better. All right. And so this week, we are going to be talking about the church. All right. Uh, and and, and uh, the, the outline of the topic is being an authentic church. All right. Being an authentic church. Amen. That word authentic means let it be real. All right. All right. And um, uh, the, uh, the lesson today comes to us from the writing of the apostle Peter. Amen. Who was, was, um, one of the three major, well, they were all of equal um, um, quality, but but the, the 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 three main ones that Jesus always took with him were Peter, James, and John. And it's very interesting reading if you go back and read the uh, read about the lives of all of the apostles. They had some very interesting lives. Uh, they 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 didn't just uh, uh, appear on the scene when they were called uh, to be disciples or followers of Christ. They had a life before and after. Amen. So it'll be good sometime to just uh, go back and read the history of the lives of the apostles. And so today we are dealing with uh, Peter's writing. It is his second epistle coming out of 2 Peter. And as I was studying, some interesting facts came up about uh, the writer and about the book that we are studying today. Uh, if we do a breakdown of 2 Peter, uh, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I well, my mind, I'm getting carried away. Okay. First Peter? Wait a minute now. First Peter. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it together in a minute. I'm going to get it together in a minute. Yes, okay. Y'all, excuse me. Just I'm just having a senior moment. Amen. So it is 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2. And I don't know why I was looking. Well, yes, I'm at the right place. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay. Y'all pray for your teacher. Okay. First Peter chapter two. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, in in this in this um, study uh, breakdown of the chapter, what he is writing about, um, he gives us several things that um, um, uh, talked about in this chapter. He talks about. He gives the first. He gives a greeting, and he talks about praises to God for His salvation. Amen. Praises to God for His salvation. Okay, and then he talks about exhortation to holiness. How many know that we are supposed to live a holy life? All right, we don't, we don't hear much about it anymore, but it's still, holiness is still required. Amen. And he talks about, uh, he talks about uh, the position of believers. Amen. He talks about a spiritual house. The church, the sanctuary is to be a spiritual house. And he talks about, uh, he talks about um, aliens and strangers, and which the gospel is open up to uh, Gentile people. He talks about submission to authority and submission to rulers. Okay. So now, in our book on page 85, and uh, it's a short lesson, but uh, there's a lot of. Um, uh, in between uh, information, which we don't have time to go into all of it, but I will try to point out some of the major points, the the writer points out here. On page 85, um, and the last paragraph in the uh, right column, it says, in the church, you would expect Jesus to be the main ingredient, the purpose for it all. Amen. First of all, what is the church? Amen. The church is a body or a group of baptized believers who are followers of Jesus Christ. So this building is referred to as the church, but this building is not the church. The building is where the church meets. The sanctuary is the place of worship. The building is where we come, the church comes together to worship God. Amen. Now, we, 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 we understand now that, that we are the church. Amen. And the church has some special characteristics. Amen. Um, as, as I just read, in the church, among us, all right, you would expect Jesus to be the main ingredient, the main attraction, the purpose for it all. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about you. The focus should always be on Jesus. Amen. He continues to say, sadly, many churches that claim to be Christian have substituted the real thing with inferior substitutes. I'm, I'm reading out of the book. I, I didn't write it. While people are hungering for the bread of life, we are serving up entertainment 
social connections, and self-help. Today's passage reminds us that in the authentic church, in the real church, everything centers on Jesus. He should always be the main focus. I don't care how good a teacher you, they say you are, Reverend Coleman. I, I don't care, Reverend Coleman. It's not about you. Amen. I, I don't care. I don't care how good you can sing. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Amen. The church cannot be built on a person, a human being, because it was not one of us that hung up on that cross. Amen. And if we take the focus off of Jesus, we become nothing more Nothing more but an entertainment venue. Okay. The purpose got to be on Jesus. It, it does not matter. It does not matter uh, how well I preach. If I'm not preaching Christ and him crucified, I might as well sit down. The writer writes here in 1 Peter 2 and 1. says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil Speakings. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the church. Come on now. The church is the place where the devil do most of his work. I'm just going to have to tell the truth. The devil does most of his work in among the congregation. Got us disagreeing with one another. Got us fighting one another. Got us not wanting to support one another. It got us uh, just all, all kind of messed up. Amen. But I dare say the devil does his work better than we do. Because he never stops. He never gives up. He is always busy. All right. Okay. But, he, but Peter says here, he's telling us, wherefore, lay aside all malice all uh, evil spirit, all hatred, amen, all disagreement, and he didn't say put away some of it, he said all, amen, amen. And who's guilty? Hmm? Because the Bible says all have sinned. And does what? Come short of the glory of God. So therefore, it behooves us to turn aside from malice, from hatred, 
from harboring ill feelings among the saints. Hmm? I heard somebody say that church hurt is the worst hurt you can imagine. But let's not confuse church hurt. You know, uh, straightening you out ain't necessarily church hurt. You may get your feelings when the preacher tell you you're wrong. Uh, I've had that to me many times. Oh, when I was a young preacher coming up, I'd turn that con on two wheels because I'm mad with the pastors. And I ain't never coming back here no more. But next Sunday, I came on back because the word was to me. It, it, the word is to help me. And it's not going to always be to my liking. Amen. When Big Mama used to get that switch, she used to say, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> Amen. I don't know why Big Mama said that. Hmm. Lay aside all malice and all guile. Now, all those things that we are guilty of and hypocrisies. Don't be a hypocrite. Amen. Be who you are. Be real. You have to be real with God because there's no hiding from him. And we need to be real with each other. There was a song a few years ago, if I can remember, it said, uh, uh, the smiling in your face, but all the time, they want to take your place, the backstabbers. That was the OJs. Y'all remember? <laughs> yes. Don't be a hypocrite. If you, if you love me, love me. If you don't like me, don't like me. But don't pretend. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Make a choice. Make a choice. And, oh my goodness, this was envies. There should not be envy in an authentic church, in a real church. We ought not to envy anyone. Oh, my goodness. Uh oh. And all evil. Speaking, backbiting, talking about one another, gossiping. Uh oh, it got quiet. <laughs> but uh, you are the church, and he's talking to the church. And he's pointing out things that the church is guilty of. And we have fallen short. And that's why we come to Bible study so we can learn more about the word of God and apply it to ourselves and do better. None of us is perfect. And we're not going to be perfect until we get out of this world. But we are still a work in progress. Amen. What was that song? Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. He, he's not through with anybody. He's working on all of us. Amen. Nobody's going gonna to make 100 yet. 
but we got to strive for it. Amen. You, you got to work at it. Lord, every time I come to Bible study on Wednesday, every time I come to Sunday school, every time I come to morning worship, I want to be better when I leave out. I want to leave out a better Christian than I was when I came in. And so studying this lesson today is going to encourage us to drop off some stuff. Amen. As newborn babes, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Amen. We long for spiritual milk. When, a, when an infant is born, it, it, it has to be started off with milk or formula until it develops. And that baby, as it ingests the nutrients from the milk, should grow, amen, because if the baby is not growing, something is wrong. So that tells me that I cannot be at the same level of Christianity today as I was when I first started. I should have grown by now. Anything alive is supposed to grow. You, ladies, if you got a plant that ain't growing, something wrong with it. And sometimes you got to dig around the root. And sometimes you got to put it in a different pot. Sometimes you got to put some fertilizer on it and be sure to water it and give it some sunlight. Amen. And then if it don't grow, you do it like, like Jesus did that fig tree, cut it down. Amen. Ain't bear no fruit. Ain't, ain't no leaves come on it yet. Cut it down. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. And then and 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 we got to be careful how we feed babies. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I, I, I'm I'm probably the oldest in here. <laughs> All right, Sister Carter, I give it to you. <laughs> but I'm up there. And I remember when the baby, babies, uh, not when they're first born, but they get about a couple of months old, and uh, mama start mashing up some, some cornbread and some pot liquor. <laughs> Mash it up with her finger. And put it in the baby mouth. And I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say the other thing they did. Y'all can. Y'all can. Okay. I ain't gonna say that. But anyway, you have to feed a baby a certain way. But now that we have grown, we ought to be off of milk and be able to ingest some meat all right now the meat the meat of the word why that ye may grow thereby all right as a christian as a child of god there should be evidence of some growth 
Amen. Now, I've been teaching this class going on something like 10 years or something like that. And there were, there were some students in the class, and when they first, when I first took over the class, I had to be real careful and, 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 and set some folks down, pull them down, calm them down. I ain't talking about you today, Barbara. But she had grown. Amen. Amen. Uh, Barbara used to be my problem child. <laughs> and she don't mind me talking about her. Because I see growth in her. There's some things that she think about doing today, she, she ain't going to do. But she, back in the past, she might have done it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking about her because I know she don't mind. I, I, some folks I can't, I can't talk about. <laughs> but that's a sign of spiritual growth. Amen. I can take more now than I used to could because I'm growing in the spirit. I'm growing in the word. I'm not so quick to fight today. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not so quick to fight today. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm learning now to just pray for my enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Give it to God. He can fix it. Amen. Amen. If, if so, be, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Your experiences with the Lord. Hallelujah. You have learned that he is full of grace. Amen. And I'm so glad that he is so full of grace that he has enough for me and for you. Amen. All right. If, if, if so be ye have tasted, hmm, since you have found out about the Lord's kindness. You have had a taste of the kindness and the goodness and the grace and the mercy of the Lord since through your experience you now know that the Lord is good. How many know he's good? Oh, hallelujah. He's good all the time. And all the time, he is good. All right? To whom coming, to, uh, to him, to the Lord, come, come to him as unto a living stone. Amen. A living stone. You know, he is described as the stone that the builders rejected. But then, too, he is the chief cornerstone. Now, what is the cornerstone? The cornerstone is that main stone in the foundation that holds the house together. Oh, hallelujah. And sometimes, church, we have to be a cornerstone. Well, Jesus is the cornerstone, but we have to be like a cornerstone. Sometimes you in a 
in a position so you can hold the thing together. All right, come on now. That's why you get so much opposition when you in leadership. Because the devil wants you to quit. He don't want you to succeed. He wants you to give up. But in some cases, if you were to leave the group, the whole thing would fall apart. Somebody got to be in there uplifting the name of Jesus. Somebody in the church, and not necessarily the preacher, has got to be the one to stick to it when things go wrong. And uplift the name of Jesus. Hold the thing together. Amen. In your auxiliary, in your ministry, it's got to be someone who is able to hold things together because things will fall apart. In every church, in every ministry, things will fall apart. God is depending on you to be like that stone. And you know what a stone has to do? A stone has to be strong. A stone has to be able to stand under pressure. Amen. You got to hold it together. But the only way you can do that is that you got to have your hand in his hand. Come on, somebody. Mm. When, your, when your ministry is not going right, the mission the Sunday school, the choir, the usher board, the trustee. Somebody got to be in there that's holding on to God. Somebody. Will you be the one? It ain't going to be easy. You're going to have to cry sometime. You will get your feelings hurt. Amen. But you got to stick with it. If it's going to succeed, you got to stay in there. Frida, you can't go home if the team ain't winning. Amen. <laughs> you got to keep coming back. You got to hang in there. Amen. Amen. Don't, you can't give up. We in the church sometimes, we so quick to give up. You, you, you got to have some stick to it. You got to be like the cornerstone. Huh? What's going to happen if you walk away, Bernita? I know you feel like it. I know you want to leave. I know you want to give up. You, know, you want to throw in the towel, throw in the hat, everything. But God may be depending on you to hold it together till he comes straighten it out. All right. A living stone that was disallowed indeed of men. If Jesus was rejected, you're going to be rejected. You're going to be discredited. You're going to be talked about. You're going to suffer. You're going to cry the midnight hour. Because all that is a part of being the church. 
But I thank God that Jesus said to Peter one day, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It didn't say the gates of hell wasn't going to fight. But it ain't going to win. You church, you going to have some hell that you have to go through. But hell shall not prevail. All right. I hope somebody hear me today. The stone was rejected and disallowed. But it was chosen of God. They might, they might reject you. But I don't mind being rejected by men as long as I'm chosen by God. You may be the chosen one in the church to stand up for right and help hold things together. Hmm? It may be it may be dependent on you, Brenda, when your heart get broken and you want to quit. When you get rejected, just know that you are chosen of God. Because mm -hmm. if Jesus had to suffer, what about the church? What about me? What about you? If you're going to be an authentic church, now everything call itself a church ain't no church. Don't y'all write me no letters. But I'm telling the truth. Ooh. Everything called itself a church is not a church. And everybody in the pulpit ain't sent by God. And another reason why a lot of folk will organize something and call it a worship center Or what, what is that thing? They, uh, it's a worship center or um, uh, a ministry. All ministries are not churches. Authentic churches. There are various reasons why people organize ministries. Various reasons. I had a preacher tell me one time, this, this, is, this, this is a ministry. Because if it was a church, I had to I have to have boards. I have to have a, a deacon board and a trustee board. And if you watch carefully, <laughs> a lot of them don't call it the, the board anymore. Because a board have rules and a board has some uh, things that, that they must follow. A ministry don't have to have no bylaws if they don't want to. Preacher told me one time, I don't have boys in this church. Because I, I don't have to answer to nobody. But the deacon board and the trustee board is there for a purpose. Checks and balances. You can't just do whatever you want to do. You need to run it by your board and they need to bring it for the congregation.
I got to teach this word because I don't want to go home and the Lord whoop me tonight for not saying it. But you are chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones. Amen. Ye also as lively stones. You are living stone. <clears throat> Form yourselves into a spiritual house. <clears throat> you are built up. A spiritual house. A holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Everything we do is not acceptable to God. The Bible says even some of your solemn assemblies. God said, I will spew them out of my mouth. God says something you're doing is nothing but sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. All right. All noise ain't good noise. You build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. We got to still teach on holiness. Holiness is next to godliness. You, you, the church, we've got to let the, the world know God ain't pleased with everything you do. And we have to be careful before we let too much of the world creep into the church. The Bible still said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world was never supposed to influence the church. The church was supposed to change the world. Offer of spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And the question on page 88, why is it important to be part of a church? I don't know about you, but if I miss church too much, I start feeling disconnected. But when I, when I come to worship and the fellowship, it seems like it makes my week go better. And even if I don't come on, on Sunday, I can't come every Sunday. When I come on Wednesday, it gives me a little bit more strength to carry on. Amen. Wherefore, he said, also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Amen. Is elect, precious, and you're talking about Jesus. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Hmm? He that believeth on the chief cornerstone, because it's precious, it's of great worth. It's chosen and it's valuable. And you really can't build without it. You can't build your life without Jesus. Come on, somebody. And he that believeth on him 
shall not be confounded, shall not be embarrassed, shall not be put to shame, shall never be disappointed. There are some disappointments in life. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus, amen, he will shelter you. He'll take away all the disappointment, all the hurt. He said here, hmm, unto you, Therefore, which believe, he's precious. He's valuable to you, believers. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. He's a stumbling block to unbelievers. Because they don't, they don't know what to do with this Jesus. But he's precious to the believer. Oh, glory. Ooh. Because if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, where would I be? Oh, amen. Some of those things that, that we have gone through in the church or in your personal life, when you had to face that situation you had to go through, if it had not been, oh, you wouldn't have made it. Oh, glory. That situation that, that, that you thought was, 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 was hopeless. But the God you serve specializes. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things called impossible. And he will do what no other whoo, Holy Ghost can do. He has made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed and we are given we are given some some admonition here on the page of uh, on the bottom of page 88 in the left column it says it says never break faith for any reason church injure no one Practice religion diligently. Defend the defenseless. Tell the truth. Amen. Because if you tell the truth, you ain't got to try to uh, wonder about what you said. Because the truth will stand alone where a lie needs something to prop it up and take another lie to prop it up. Amen. Tell the truth. Grant hospitality to anyone. Be kind to people. Be hospitable. Be courteous. All right. All right. And then it says, sound kind of like the church, right? A noble king surrounded by people who have adopted his rules of honor and service. But there is one key differentiator. King Arthur is famous for initiating the round table. 
where there was no head of the table. Everybody was in a similar position, equal position. That's why we have a round table. Nobody's at the head. Everybody equal. Most important, uh, the most important seat in the house, the head of the table. Arthur and his knights convene at the famous round table so that none, not even the king himself, could claim precedence over the others. All were equal. Amen. That's not how it is in the kingdom of God. Jesus is at the head. He is preeminent among us. He is without peer. There is none like him. No one can compare. He is the foundation of the church. You can't have a church without Jesus. Everything we are and do rests on him. Amen. Everything. Everything. And then Peter, he says here, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal peace with priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are supposed to be different from everybody else. Come on, somebody. You're supposed to look different. You're supposed to act different. You're supposed to talk different. You're supposed to walk different. You're supposed to dress different. I know he said come as you are. But the way you are is not always how you have to be. I'm going to offend somebody. I'm going to offend somebody. But if you on the praise team, I don't think you ought to be up there with no cut out jeans. Reverend Coleman said it. Nobody else. But I'm going to leave it alone. But the book said we're supposed to be peculiar. We're supposed to be different. I don't suppose to come in the sanctuary and feel like I'm in the Davis Theater in the nightclub. You are peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. He put you in the light. What you want to go back in the dark this far? Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Yes, you are a human being, you in this human flesh, but God has given you the power to subdue the flesh. You're supposed to rule your flesh and not let the flesh rule you. There are some things that the flesh require, but you ain't got to give in to it. Okay, I'm going to talk to the ceiling. Some things you got to make a choice on. Sometimes you got to overrule your flesh. Come on now. I don't know. I, I, when I go to heaven, I want to go with all with both of my eyes. I don't want to have to pluck one of them out because of my flesh. Some things I, as a church I ain't supposed to touch. 
I don't want to have to cut off one of my arms because I'm touching the wrong stuff. Okay. Ooh, Jesus. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. The church ain't supposed to get out there in the world and, and, and follow there with the sinners. Amen. We're supposed to go out there and take on the attitude of the world. We're supposed to be trying to win the sinners. We can't win the sinners if we're doing the same thing they're doing. If we're talking the same language they talk. If we go in the same places they go. All right. You can't win them like that. You got to be an example. You are the church. And the church's job is to win the world. To change the world. An authentic church. A real church. Whereas they speak against you as evildoers, amen, they may, by your good works, by you being the church, by you being the example, showing the example that you're supposed to be, hmm, which they shall behold, they're going to see it, they're going to look at you, because they're watching you. Because uh, it's just like the Pharisees did Jesus, always looking for an opportunity to bring him down. You can't win the world if you go out there and act like the world. Hmm? You, you got to be peculiar. You got to be different. You got to have a, a, a different attitude. You can't go out there and cuss somebody out. Because somebody's going to be watching. Amen. And sometimes it comes back to me. I can be, I, I, I can be, um, I was getting on the elevator the other day somewhere. And um, somebody said, hey, Reverend Coleman. I didn't, I, I didn't recognize the person. I could be a Walmart. Aren't you Pastor Coleman? Aren't you the Bible teacher? I don't know him. What if I was in there telling somebody off? What if that other twin was? Lord have mercy. But I thank God now he has given me the ability to control. Amen. Don't, don't react. Like the flesh tell you to react. Because sometimes you want to say something that ain't church like. Sometimes you want to act like that other twin. <laughs> Amen. Lord, control my tongue. So I don't say the wrong thing. Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. Lord, hold my hand before I slap somebody. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. They may by your good work which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Amen. The way you act among sinners might influence them. It, it, will, it will influence them one way or the other. The way we act among sinners will either influence them to get in the church or go away from the church. Because sinners 
are waiting for an opportunity to say, well, if that's how they act in the church, I ain't going. So we want to be the other example. Amen. Because this flesh will rise up. Lord, help me to subdue my flesh. Help me to keep my mind stayed on you. Amen. And we're saying sometime I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And going through the day, let's try to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. Amen? All right. Well, that's it for the day. Thank you. I pray that the church has been helped today. And as a result of this lesson, we are going to be a stronger church and have a better impact on the world. Let us look to the Lord for prayer. Most holy God, our Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for putting the words in my mouth. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for you being the teacher and allowing me to be your vessel. And Father, as we leave this Bible study on today, those who are present in person and those on the virtual, Pray, God, that you keep us all until the next Bible study hour. In Jesus' name, and the whole church said, amen. God bless you. All right. All right. Amen? Okay.